Hi, my name is Karen and I'm from the St. Johns County Public Library System Extension Services Department. Today we're in my kitchen. We're going to do some kitchen science. There's an old saying that if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. But I say, if you can't stand the heat, boy is it hot outside. Come on in and let's do some really cool science experiments to cool ourselves off in the kitchen. Today we're going to make something called layered lemonade or Fibonacci lemonade. Now Fibonacci, who's Fibonacci? Fibonacci was a mathematician. Yes, sorry guys, but math and science go hand in hand. Well, he was a mathematician from, where do you think the name Fibonacci is from? He was a mathematician from Italy and he discovered that certain things in nature have a certain sequence of patterns and they're always the same. And this sequence um, would be that basically if you have something that measures, and let's just say we start with zero and we add one to it, then we would have what? One. And then we add one more to that and then we get two. Now we add two to that number and then to the same number and we get three. I'll show you an example. This is the Fibonacci sequence of numbers and it shows the first 12 numbers. So basically, if I had zero and I added one, I got one. And then I added one to that number and I got two. But when then I added two to one, I got three. Then I added the three to the two and got five and so on. There's many examples of this in nature. One really cool example that you guys that live here in Florida may know about are hurricanes. And in the Fibonacci sequence, you can always see this spiral happening. So here's a hurricane showing the Fibonacci spiral. It starts very small in the middle, and then that same sequence of getting larger and larger and larger happens. So it increases by adding each one of these to the one before it. Another example in nature are nautilus shells. So if I measured this say as one, I started with zero, so zero plus one is one, and then I added it to itself, this one would measure two. But then when I added the two together with the one I would have three, but then when I added the three to the two, this should measure as five. So what does that have to do with lemonade? Well, Fibonacci had a lot to learn about science and when he learned about um, the Fibonacci, he also learned that that works with the ratios that create density. So in our Fibonacci lemonade, is gonna have a lot to do with density. So every time we increase the density for our lemonade, we are going to then be able to layer our lemonade. However, we're gonna work backwards because obviously we want the heaviest thing on the bottom. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna make layered lemonade of all types of colors. So here's what we need. We need sugar, we need water, a measuring cup, some lemon juice, this will work with orange juice as well if you don't have lemon, but you need some kind of citrus juice. But since we're making lemonade, we chose lemon. A spoon, four glasses, and fill them with ice. You can do this without ice, but it's easier to do in the beginning by using ice. Now you really want about four eight ounce glasses for this recipe. I'm only gonna make two. I'm gonna make one small one and one large one just for the sake of time. But you can, the recipe is for four eight to 10 ounce glasses. You also need a teaspoon size measuring spoon. And to make it pretty so we can see the layers, several different food colorings. I have the four basic colors here and then we can mix to add because we, um, we'll make a five to seven layer lemonade.
and then I have paper towels because I am a little messy sometimes. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a simple syrup. That will be what, the sugar that makes our lemonade sweet. So in order to make a simple syrup, I'm going to take one cup of sugar. And I'm going to pour in one cup of water. Now I'm gonna grab a bigger measuring cup here. In a simple syrup, that's all it is. It is a mixture of one part sugar, one part water, and we're gonna just dissolve the sugar into the water. We're stirring it. So once this is dissolved, and I'll keep stirring a little bit, we'll have our simple syrup. All right, so of course, in order to make lemonade, we need now our lemon juice. Now, I have the recipe for Fabinaki lemonade right here. And this is the layers from the top to the bottom if you were doing seven. However, like I said, we need to make the densest layer first. So we're gonna go from bottom to top. So we're gonna start with the bottom layer. So what we need to do is in my smaller measuring cup, we need to measure out five teaspoons of lemon juice. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's stir this up to make sure it is completely dissolved. Not quite. Now I'm gonna use my teaspoon again, and I need eight teaspoons of simple syrup. That's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, what I want to do in order to make four glasses is take my measuring cup and fill it the rest of the way up until it says a half a cup to the half cup line with water. And next, we wanna make our first colored layer. So I'm gonna make red. And I don't wanna add a whole bunch more liquid to it, and we don't need a lot. So I'm gonna put two tiny drops of red in here. Stir it up. Now the best thing to do is to pour slowly. The first one does not really matter. So we would divide this up over four glasses. I will not be able to use all of this since I am only using two glasses. So for the sake of this experiment, I will just pour the rest out. All right, so we have our red layer. So next we're gonna go to step six on the recipe, which we will post the recipe at the very end of the video. And in step six, I need three teaspoons of lemon juice. I'm gonna rinse my cup really quick so I get the red out. Anytime you're cooking and you're following a recipe, it is better to be exact. Two. Three. Three teaspoons of lemon juice. And this time, we want five teaspoons of simple syrup. Two, three, four, five. Now the simple syrup is what gives it its density, its weight, and this time we put in five. The first time we put in eight, Five is obviously less than eight, so this one should not be as heavy. I'm gonna make this layer green. So again, we just put in, I'm only putting in one drop of green because it's much darker. We're gonna stir it up to add water till you get to the half cup line. When I was uh, practicing this, I forgot to add the water every time. 
and the experiment did not work. But that's what science is all about, about trial and error. All right, so this time it's a little more important to pour a little bit slower, and that's what the ice is for too. The ice kind of slows down. And what we should see is we should start seeing the lemonade layers. So the green should sit on top of the red. So I've got a green layer in now, and I'm looking to make sure we got it covered really good. All right, I'm gonna dump the rest out since I'm not making four. Rinse my measuring cup, and we're gonna add the next layer. So we're doing step five now. So we did step seven, six, five. So this time we need two teaspoons, one, two of lemon juice, and three teaspoons of simple syrup. And again, I'm gonna stir, make sure none of that sugar settled to the bottom. One, two, three. And I think this time we will make a, let's make a yellow layer. Add some food coloring. Stir it up. Don't forget to add the water to make one half cup. And again, pour slowly over the ice. Oh, it's looking so pretty already. Make sure, oh, it's layering beautiful. All right. Rinsing my cup. Don't wanna make any weird colors by mixing those colors. So now we are on step four, which is one teaspoon of lemon juice, two teaspoons of simple syrup, water to the half cup line. Now we need to make blue. All right, let's stir it up. And we're gonna pour. And I'm gonna grab just a few more ice cubes. All right, so now we have a blue layer and I'm gonna make a little bit more blue. It's very pretty. And I'm going to dump. All right, and now we have step three which is one teaspoon of lemon again. Well, wait a minute, one and we did one before, but if you remember the Fibonacci sequence of numbers, one shows up twice. So we have one teaspoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of simple syrup. Let's make orange. Does anybody remember what makes orange? Hmm, red, just a little bit and yellow. Stir that up. Ooh, it's almost a dark orange. I think I'm, I'll add a little more yellow to that. All right, and we're gonna fill it up with the water to the half cup. Whoa, I almost poured simple syrup into that. Let's fill that up to the half a cup. That would not have worked out at all. Okay. All right, so we got a layer of orange. And we are going to then add for step number two, only the simple syrup. I think I'll 
go back and color it. Um, maybe we'll color it red again. Fill up our water to the half cup line. Wow, well, this is like mostly water. And pour. And pour. And for the last one, we are just going to add lemon juice. Now, yes, you should make it and put it all in there for step one. I'm going to do this though, because I tasted this yesterday and it was weak. I'm just gonna add my lemon juice over the top. All right, so here we have, I'll put it here so you can see it, a very beautifully layered drink. Fibonacci lemonade. Here's the other one. Sometimes these colors look a little better in the bigger one. The red on the bottom is very pretty. All right, so when it's hot outside, and you can't stand the heat. Stay out of the kitchen. No, I say go to the kitchen and make some cool science. Mmm, delicious. We'll be back in just a little bit to make some dry ice ice cream, just in case the lemonade didn't cool you off enough. Okay, so we're back and ready to make dry ice ice cream. So I have all my lemonade stuff cleaned up and I have out the stuff to make dry ice ice cream. So obviously we need dry ice. And if you haven't worked with dry ice before, you need to know that dry ice can be very dangerous. Um, we don't want to touch it with bare hands. Dry ice is negative 109 degrees. Um, and so it's very, very, very cold and it would cause burns. Um, also, we cannot put whole chunks of dry ice into our ice cream, so we have to break it up into a powder. Now, when you buy dry ice, you buy it in a frozen block. So you just leave it in the bag and take a hammer or a mallet and crush it up into a fine powder. Um, you can do this in the blender. If you do it in the blender, make sure that you have a way to release the carbon dioxide that's coming off of it. Um, I beat mine with a hammer. As long as you don't have any um, pieces that are bigger than pea size, you're okay. So the things we need for this are dry ice. As you can see, my bowl was freezing. Measuring cup. Whole milk. Heavy whipping cream. A mixer. Now, if you have a big, what they call a stand mixer, that works great too, but you can use a little hand mixer as well. A wooden spoon, not a metal spoon. A metal spoon gets cold and you'll have trouble with the ice cream and um, dry ice sticking to the spoon and freezing on the spoon. So use a wooden spoon. And in order to make this easier, I just went to the store and got a um, ice cream mix. Now you can get any ice cream recipe you want and use that as your base, but I decided to make it quicker by using a mix and we're gonna make chocolate today. So the first thing we're going to do is open our chocolate mix. And one thing I did do before we do this is I took my bowl for about three hours and I put it into the freezer and got my bowl really cold. Now this will help when we put the dry ice in and the dry ice starts sublimating, meaning that it's gonna start turning into the carbon dioxide as it melts. Because remember, the temperature outside is much warmer than negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. So we, it's gonna melt automatically and put off um, a lot of carbon dioxide. So the coldness will help that from um, happening really, really fast. Because uh, I want you to be able to see that chemical reaction. So we're gonna pour in our ice cream base into our bowl. And the directions call for two cups of milk. Now, if you've ever made ice cream at home in a churn, 
you have to use rock salt, and that is to lower the temperature of the uh, ice that's in there. And it churns and churns and churns, and your ice cream never gets really hard. Um, it, it's kind of creamy and, and milky. Now, dry ice ice cream is gonna be kind of like the best ice cream you've ever had, but it's interesting in that it's kind of carbonated. Um, the carbon dioxide that's in dry ice is the same as the carbon dioxide that's in like a soda. So it's kind of like if you've ever had a root beer float or, an, or any kind of ice cream float, the ice cream's kind of got those little bubbles in like that, but yet it's really creamy. Now, um, this happens to be 16 ounces, which is exactly the two cups, so I don't have to measure this. I'm just going to pour it all in. And we're just going to stir this until it's all mixed up. And this is a much simpler way to make ice cream than having to churn it all day long. Everything is at least blended together. We don't have to make sure all the little um, pieces of the chocolate are necessarily mixed in or anything, because it is going to mix when we put that in there. Now, this is going to freeze pretty fast. Now, the odd thing is I could not find a recipe that tells me exactly how much dry ice powder to put in here. So it does say though to add just a spoonful at a time to use it with, um, to mix it with the blender and then kind of just wait until you get a certain amount of creaminess. And when we get this all mixed up, we're gonna put it in the freezer um, before we eat it for just a little bit. And the whole purpose of putting it is in the freezer is so it doesn't burn our mouths. Now how can ice cream burn our mouth? Well, remember that the dry ice going in here is much, much, much too cold for us. And the same burns that it could cause on your hand, it could cause to your throat, and we don't want to do that. So since the freezer is only freezing things and the frozen point at being 32 degrees, by putting this into the freezer, we're actually warming our ice cream up. So we are going to know it will warm a little bit just by being out and by being mixed but it's still too cold. So we are going to warm our ice cream up for a little bit and then um, I'll come back and we'll give it a little taste. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we start mixing our dry ice. I'm gonna rinse my spoon here and we're gonna start. with just one small spoon. Now we should start seeing a lot of that carbon dioxide come off of here. So it's got a little smoky looking. Okay, we're gonna add some more dry ice. What's really cool about it, I don't know if you can really see, but as soon as I put the um, dry ice into it, and definitely once I started mixing, it started looking like a soda um, in that it, adding the air to it, it's very bubbly. It looks almost like um, some kind of witch's brew or something. So I'm gonna add it, whoa, as soon as I put that in, it's big bubbles and stuff. As you can see, the um, sublimation happened. Okay, oh, as I'm mixing, now you can kind of see it on the beaters. It's getting thicker and thicker. So it's kind of like soft serve consistency. I think if we add at least one more spoon that we will probably be where we need to be. All right, I am loving this consistency. I think I am going to add just the rest of the dry ice I have in here, and we're gonna mix that in. And I really like the creaminess of it after we mix this in. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the freezer for about an hour, and we'll come back and we'll see what we got. Oh boy, this looks amazing. I'll get some pictures posted of what it looks like before it goes into the freezer. We're gonna put it in there, let it warm up and harden just a little, and then we'll see if we can scoop it and we'll taste this dry ice cream. Okay, I just took the ice cream out of the freezer. It's only been about an hour. And what we have here is definitely the consistency of soft serve. I can almost scoop it 
So however you like your ice cream, if you like it harder, I would just suggest leaving it in there um, three, four hours. If you like a soft serve, you could definitely eat it now. Um, I tasted it, it's very yummy. Now this is just plain chocolate. You could put in candy, um, like if you like chocolate flavored stuff, you could mix it with other things, mix them right in. Some brownie bites, some Oreo cookies, anything would be delicious in this. So that was a lot of fun. If you um, like what you see and you like these science experiments, please make sure that you like, share, or comment. And we'll be back next week with some more kitchen science.